Um, the first thing I'm going to tell you, um, I, I want to preface it. I am not in any way making fun of anybody. I don't want anybody to think that. But I want to tell you that we went to Walmart yesterday and I saw something for the first time in my life that I've never seen at Walmart before. And I think we see quite a bit at Walmart. Um, you know, if, if you live in another country, you might not know that a lot of people go to Walmart in their pajamas or their curlers and their hair and you know stuff like you see lots of stuff at Walmart so it takes a lot to surprise me so we got we were in the parking lot yesterday at Walmart and I got out of the car and from my line of sight I could I saw a man wiping himself he was standing next to his car outside the passenger side door and he was literally had his hand between his legs. His pants were off. There was no pants there. His shirt was long enough to cover, to cover himself. So it wasn't like in Righteous Gemstones. <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't like that. His shirt was long enough to cover him. So I didn't see any private parts at all. All I'm seeing is bare legs and his hand wiping himself. And I thought, oh, I, I, what's going on? So I told Kevin when we got out of the car, I said, I swear this man is wiping himself. I said, you have to look because that's what I do. And, you know, uh, we do that. We'll tell each other, you know, you need to see this. You need to see this. So as we're walking by, I looked and there was literally a pile of pooped in clothes feces well no i saw the feces oh i saw the clothes with the poop well you saw the poop too but no there was literally a pile of feces next to him with his clothes where he had either he had had an emergency and gone right there on the because it was on the pavement yeah there was see, a pile. i just saw i thought i saw clothes there was a pile on the pavement yeah i didn't see so that. he had either dropped his pants and gone right there on the pavement or he had gone in his pants and was cleaning himself off whichever one um it it was disturbing it was disturbing and i've never seen anything like that before um, and, and Kevin said once we got home, because we were still talking about it. Because I said, I feel sorry for the guy. I'm going to straighten you just a little bit. Yeah, you do. Um, you feel sorry for the guy. I mean, you know, clearly something happened where he, no, no normal person is going to sit there and just drop trowel in the parking lot. Um, so you feel sorry for him. But then again, it's like, what would you do? Okay. And I told Kevin. I, I said, my question was, my question was, if you are at a grocery store, let's say you're at Target. And you, um, and you and I'm in the car and you desperately have to use the bathroom and I'm in do? the car I'm going I'll sit and crap my pants I'm not gonna do it outside the car I wouldn't do it either you so you would do it in your pants yeah yeah well, my first thought was I would be rushing to get into the store yeah <laughs> yes but, I'd, be, I'd yeah. be squeezing of and course. duck walking of course as much as i could yeah i don't think this guy was capable of getting no. that fast to the store no didn't look like it from what i saw that did not look like that kind of the bowel movement there's a difference this one was like it was, it was coming instantaneous. it was yeah <laughs> it was an explosion uh, <laughs> um so yeah i would sit there yeah before i did that and i mean we we have um we know somebody who has had so many instances with bathrooms, hilarious, has the most hilarious stories, um, the bathroom stories, stuff that has happened. Um, and I wish we could tell you, but we just can't. Uh, just hilarious things. But, okay, so that happened in the parking lot. And then... I'm on, I'm talking on Marco with Andrew. So Andrew's, Andrew's talking to me and I'm replying back to Andrew. You can go by it. I can? Yeah, well, I can't see now, but I'm assuming you still can. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, 
I look up from talking to Andrew and there is this man walking by with this huge parrot. Big red parrot. On his back. And I'm going to insert footage of that. We are in Walmart right now, and there is a guy in here with a parrot on his shoulder. With a parrot in the middle of Walmart. Is that not crazy? He has nine parrots. Really? 52? So, it is a beautiful, absolutely beautiful parrot. I think it's gorgeous. Big too. And so, I, I show it to Andrew. I turn the camera in, out, around and I'm like, oh There's my gosh, the things you see in Walmart, um, it's just absolutely crazy that there's a guy walking around with a parrot on his shoulder. Well, Andrew responded back to me and never mentioned the parrot. And I said, when we got back out to the car, I told Andrew, I said, Andrew, you replied back to me and you never said anything about the parrot. And he said, that's because I've seen everything in my, where he works. So he said- He works in retail, so. He works in retail. And he said, it looks like they're building an ark over there. It does, it's big. Um, he said um, that he has seen, uh, what all has he said? I wrote down some of the things he said he He's saw. seen parrots. He's seen every kind of dog you can imagine. He's seen sheep, uh, baby pigs, horses. Um, he's seen a calf in a buggy with a blank blanket and a dog and bed. And a dog bed. <laughs> a <laughs> calf. A baby, a baby cow in a, in a buggy. A uh, man with a white cat, they call him the cat guy, and the cat just sits on his shoulders walking back and forth. Um, and then the he, most. He said it was. It's the, really well behaved. He said it was the best behaved cat. He said it's not on a leash or anything. Yeah, right. And he said walks it walks from the, one side of his shoulder to the other in the store. My, my back would be hurting after all that. Um, ferrets. He's seen people with ferrets. And um, they did a the pet a wing which is like a Halloween thing where people bring their pets in dressed up. So he said the best one he's ever seen was a chicken with a bow tie sitting in a KFC bucket. <laughs> I said, Andrew, you mean to tell me you saw a chicken with a bow tie in a KFC bucket and you didn't take a picture for your mother? I know, that would Why be a perfect Why didn't picture. you take a picture for your mother? You would think the, that they would take pictures for the store and post them somewhere, but you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, he said he's also seen a sheep wearing a Superman unitard, which would be hilarious. It would. A uh, Boston Terrier with one eye and a pirate costume. We were literally just talking about it yesterday, uh, about animals. And one came in today. I did not get a picture, so you can go ahead and be mad. Uh, but one, ca I could give you 47 guesses and you wouldn't guess what animal walked into my damn store today. This, uh, this girl walks up to the counter. You know, she's wearing like a, uh, like a button up flannel type shirt or whatever. Um, and she has this cup of raspberries in her hand. Red, because like they're just raspberries. I said, that's a healthy snack or some bullshit like that. And she said, they're not for me. What 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 was the name? I gotta remember the damn name. Gustav. <laughs> that's what it was. She said, these aren't for me. They're for Gustav. And she raises her shirt pocket up and there's a bat in her pocket. A bat and she hands it she proceeds to hand it a raspberry and the little sucker grabs it and starts eating it and I'm like oh my in God and I'm like Josh Josh because Josh loves it too so Josh comes over and I was like look in her pocket and he's, he's like freaking out I, I I told him I said I can't believe you haven't taken these pictures and sent them to me uh, because even if Andrew doesn't want to post them, I would certainly post them to Instagram. Uh, 
uh, because you know, I worked in retail for a long time. I never saw any of that stuff. Um, I did too. I worked at uh, I worked at Kmart for, but that was uh, one of my one of my first jobs was Kmart, and I never saw anything like that. And then I worked at Winn Dixie at the register for a long time at Winn Dixie, and I never saw anything like that yeah. either. But well, first of all, he's talking about a Halloween costume competition, so yeah. that's why you're getting the dogs in the costume. Right. But then to bring your pets in, I never growing up saw pets in the store at all. No, that it, wasn't a thing. It was not a thing. It did not happen. And you have so many people with allergies these days um, that I'm honestly surprised they allow it. And um, I thought the parrot, I, I will say, I thought the parrot was absolutely beautiful. But at the same time, I think it's wrong of number one of the man to bring his parrot to walmart and number two for walmart to allow him in the door with his parrot i think it's wrong i don't think they should allow it at all and i don't think they should allow any pet that isn't that isn't a marked that it is a what is what support, are, dog. support dog if it doesn't have special those animals have something on them to let people know this is a, that this is a support animal. And if it doesn't have that on there, I don't think they should be able to let them on the door. Because so many people are now just bringing Fifi in um, just because they don't want to leave them at home. Well, I, I just don't agree with it. I think especially with the bird, um, I think uh, birds carry diseases. And I think it's very unsanitary. So what he was you in the think? food department. He, oh, he was in the <laughs> produce. He was in the produce. Um, yeah. So imagine picking up your nice golden delicious and having a little bird poo poo on it. Um, you know. I do have to admit the bird hadn't pooped on the guy or anything. So. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> I, I have to say this too. That bird had not pooped on his back at all. His back looked completely clean. That bird did not look like it pooped on anything. And let me go a step further and say, we have seen birds in Walmart flying around. Oh yeah, have, from outside. That have gotten in the outside. Yeah. So, as a warning to you, I would say if you're not one of these people who washes your produce, you need to make sure you're washing your produce because I'm not saying that somebody brought in an animal that did that, but if you do find something, I mean, it's from, birds just get in. Birds get in all these places. Um, we've been in Lowe's and I mean, you, you've got these big doors opening and closing. It just makes sense that you're gonna get an animal in there. Oh yeah, they get birds in all of them. We had birds in uh, Pace when I worked there. Oh, did you? Yeah, because we had the, the automotive department. We had the big doors up front. Yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. happen. Um, and i tell you something else. I, I never would have thought about mice. Um, and mice now, are everywhere. Every time we go in Lowe's now, I can't help but think, where are the mice? Yeah, mice are everywhere. Anywhere they got food, they're going to be there. Yeah, but Lowe's? Lowe's has feed and, and all kinds of stuff. Oh. That where, bags of chips up front. I mean, you know. Where is the feed at Lowe's? Don't they sell uh, seed, bird seed, and stuff like that? Oh, uh, okay. So you, so they would be over in the bird seed. I would think so. Okay. Anywhere they can eat, they're going to go. Okay, so that's probably where the mice are hiding out. It's near the bird seed and stuff. Probably. Because I was thinking, where would that be? I, I'm surprised that they do sell little snacks up front at Lowe's. I'm surprised that those aren't nibbled on and stuff. They might be. You just don't see them. They throw them away. I don't know. And, and what keeps animals from just going hog wild at the grocery store then? In the bread and all? What, what keeps our bread and stuff like that safe they, they from, have, from animals? They have bait stations and traps and all that stuff. Like so that. your dad... My dad was in pest control. Okay, so. that's what I was going to say. Kevin's dad was in pest control. That's That was his job for years and years and years. 
And I know you've told me before that he went around to restaurants and stuff like that, but you never have mentioned he went in a grocery store. I don't think he, he had some grocery store calls, but Dad did most of the restaurants and the big horse farms and stuff. Oh, horse farms? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I like thoroughbred, multi-million dollar farms. Oh, I don't remember you telling me that. Oh yeah, I went to the, I went on the weekends and helped that all the time with horse farms. Oh really? Yeah, he was just changing out bait boxes. Is all he was doing. Where were where were the bait boxes located? They're outside of barns. And oh. Some inside of barns. And if you go to any restaurant, pretty much any restaurant ever, uh -huh. um, you're gonna see some kind of box outside uh -huh. with a hole in it. And okay. that, that is a bait box for a mouse or rat. So it has food in there. It has poison in it. Okay. And so they eat it and then they and leave. They take it back to wherever they're going and then they die. They die. They, so your dad didn't actually clean up the dead animals? Not usually. Now, there was one case where I know that he, um, they did it in a feed store. It was uh, like a Southern States feed store. Uh -huh. And they were just overran with mouse, mice because they were... Uh, it was a feed store, so they had food everywhere, you know. Right, but what makes them different than Lowe's? Because it was stacked, I mean, everywhere. Literally, oh, the whole place oh. was full of oh, okay, grain okay. And, and everything. That's so they had for. like three times It was a much. farm grain store that sold food for cows and horses and all right. that stuff. So they were overran. So they got some kind of chemical, some kind of poison and killed them all. And um, the next day they said they came in, there was like hundreds of them just laying everywhere. Ugh. That so they had to go around disturbing. and pick them up. That would literally be a nightmare to me. That oh, yeah. I would, very okay. disturbing. And I'm sure people are thinking, uh, kill the poor mice. Well, you know. Well, you can't let them go crazy. Yeah, there were like like hundreds of them. Yeah, you, you can't do that. You, you, you would be overrun. That's just, that's... Well, you got a business if you're a business. Yeah, you literally got yeah, a business. That's, yeah, that's just, no, that's uh, somebody. And then your customers have got them running across their feet and stuff. There's so many of them. So, I mean. Yeah, that's not rational thinking. Yeah. Uh, that's somebody. You also, that, at the restaurants, you got to have stuff like that because, uh, you know, your customer going to quit coming to you if they see mice running yes, around. Yes, yes, <laughs> exactly. Can you imagine being at a McDonald's or, or any any restaurant? All of them have bait boxes, trust me. Um, but can you imagine being at McDonald's or wherever and seeing a mouse run across the floor? Oh, it would be, be horrible. Yeah. It, I it remember would... at school, we had a, there was like, a, for, for about a year, we had a mouse problem at the school. And I don't even know why. This was at least at, oh, at, your at manufacturing. Oh, where, okay. Yeah, where I work at the school. I thought you meant when you were a kid. No, no, no. I'm talking about when I was working at the, at the Okay, college. okay. So, um. We had mice, not really bad, but there were mice running around. You would see them occasionally. In the manufacturing building? Yeah. Well, there's, there's not nothing even food in there. In there. I know. I don't know why they were doing it. I guess people leaving their lunch and oh, stuff in places. I don't yes. know. Yes. I bet that was So, in cool. uh, the doors, they got these big bay doors that don't really seal very well. So, right. yeah, they just come in. But I remember lecturing one time, and I was talking, and all of a sudden, I saw one run from one side of the room to the other side of the room, and I went... The, some of the students went, was that a mouse? <laughs> <laughs> was that a mouse? And I said, yep. And I said, it just went underneath that cabinet, so I need to tell them where it went or it's, it's little hidey hole is so they can get it. So you didn't, there was no exclamation or no, ah, or ooh. No, nobody did that. Somebody, somebody literally just said, I saw it. And about the same time I saw it, one of the students said, was that a mouse? Oh, yeah. No, see, I would have been up on a chair, even if it, it was It ran by so fast and it was gone. So, I, I mean, you know what? I would have still been like, ah! There would have been something coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Well, I can tell you, um, and I think I told you this years ago, one of the teachers, I think he's, I think he died, but one of the teachers that was down there in that Bay Area where you're talking about, he, his wife would send him uh, to work every day with lunch. And she would send him uh, lunch in these, they were, uh, they were in everything. They were in glass containers with lids. They were in butter bowls. They were in Rubbermaid containers with lids. Ziploc bags. And he, he basically never took them home. So, 
when I went down to his room to talk to him for a while, he, uh, we're talking and talking and I'm looking around and I'm seeing all these things. And somehow, I don't remember how it came up, um, but somehow it came up that that's what those were, were containers, empty containers from his lunch that he never took home. I don't know how his wife had any dishes at home, had anything at home to put anything in, because that's how many he had there. It was a whole collection. They probably kept going out and buying them. That's what I'm wondering too. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, because it, they were all around him. Like his desk was piled up with papers and stuff like <laughs> that, but then you had all that piled up too. So that, uh, that was interesting. Did, uh, did your office mate used to collect anything like that? No. Was he really good at throwing stuff away? He was good about throwing stuff away. That's good. He would, now he would pile stuff up, like papers yeah, and stuff. but not food. Not food. Okay. I don't remember any food. Well, really. that's good. Not me. No, because he would, uh, no, he was a hoarder of papers and other miscellaneous. Right. Junk. But, right. But not, not food type but stuff. But not food. No, not that I can remember. Like. I, I, I do know somebody who does um, uh, buy and buy and buy food. And then instead of taking stock of what they have, they'll go out to the store and buy more food. Mm -hmm. And so then when you go through the cabinets to look, you get stuff that expired back in 1980-something because they they don't take stock of what they have. They get rid of stuff. Um, they have on um, on YouTube, a lot of these, uh, a lot of channels do these pantry challenges. And um, I heard somebody say something really smart. Somebody said, or something that I think is very true. Uh, these pantry challenges are good for people who have basically hoarded up. They've gone out and they've bought, they bought and bought and bought and bought too much food, and then they need to get rid of a bunch of it, and so they do these pantry challenges to try to just use things that they have in the pantry before they buy anything else. And I think that's a good idea because a lot of times, you know, if, if you just keep buying and you never take stock of it, it you're going to get to where it's like, oh my gosh, this is so much stuff that I'm never going to use all this stuff. What I hate is when we buy stuff and you need it for that one recipe. Yeah, and then you got half a box or whatever. Yeah, and when you buy it, you know you're never going to use it again. I've done that with so many things. It's like I bought um, a certain flavoring or something like that, and I know, daggone good and well, I'm never going to use this again, but I need it for this one recipe, so I have to go ahead and buy it. That's what that's what will get you. And then you hate to just... So then you go away. look for these oddball recipes, recipes you would never make that has the same thing in it. Uh -huh, just to try to, just use, try to it. use it and mm -hmm. justify it. Yeah, that is an old car. There is, it looks what old. kind of car is it? Maybe a Buick? I don't know. Cadillac? I could uh, kind what? of had that look. It uh, It is a rainy day, and we plan. Somebody asked me if uh, they said, I don't have a mire in my area. And a lot of people don't have a mire. And, and I always greatly appreciate when we do a review of that Fredericks by Meyer or some kind of Meyer brand. There's another Meyer brand that Kevin's tried on his Lunchtime Review channel too. Some goodness, true goodness or something like that is another Meyer brand. Anyway, I always appreciate when you all watch those videos, even when you don't have a mire in your area, because you were trying to support the channel. Uh, but somebody said, I don't have a mire in my area. I would love it if you would show the frozen food section just to see if they have different things that we don't have in our area. So we plan to do that today. We plan to go to Meyer, and I'm going to take you to the good mire. Uh, we have, both of Myers are nice. I don't want to act like they're not. Both of them are nice. But one we, of them is more stocked than the other one usually. One of them is better stocked. It's neater. 
it's cleaner, it's brighter, um, everything. Now I say this, and now I'm gonna go get a video of it, and we'll see. But everything. A bunch of stuff. I know, <laughs> I know. Hopefully, it's as nice as it always is. Yeah. Everything is normally, you know how it's called something when you have to go around and pull stuff forward. On, yeah, everything is nicely fronted on the the shelves. And so it's just a really nice mire. It's probably what, 45 minutes? Yeah, half an hour, something like that. Yeah, to get there in, in decent traffic. And so we're gonna go there for you today and I'm going to try to get uh, the freezer section as good as I can. Hopefully I got everything in this video. There were some points where I, I stopped, I would have to stop filming because people were around. And so, uh, I, but when I got home, I had pictures, like still pictures on my camera and because I was using my cell phone to film with. So I feel like I may not have gotten every single section of the freezer because I feel like I thought I was filming and I really wasn't filming. <laughs> so, you know, I just did the best I could. Uh, but for those of you that don't have a Meyer store, I wanted to tell you a little bit about it as we're shopping here. Meyer is a family-owned regional retailer based in Grand Rapids, Michigan. They have over 240 super centers in six states, including Michigan, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Illinois, and Wisconsin. They employ approximately 70,000 team members. In 1934, Hendrick Meyer saw an opportunity to take care of the customers who visited his Greenville, Michigan barber shop. He purchased $338.75 worth of merchandise on credit and together with his 14-year-old son, Fred, opened Meyer's Grocery. In 1962, Hendrick and Fred revolutionized retail by breaking down the barriers between selling groceries, clothing, and hardware, opening the first ever Supercenter. Today, Meyer remains family-owned and now is one of the largest privately owned companies in America. Named Retailer of the Year by the grocery industry's largest trade pub uh, publication, Progressive Grocer, Meyer's Supercenter's average 150000 to 250,000 square feet and stock more than 220,000 items. Meyer stores offer all the convenience and value you'd expect from the company that pioneered at the Supercenter concept, along with the fresh, high quality food and friendliness you'd want from your local hometown grocer. They are able to bring this hometown feel to their stores by virtue of being a smaller family-owned regional retailer based in the Midwest. They also have a close-knit team, and at the individual store level, their team members are very plugged into the communities and, and are empowered to make decisions based on what their local customers need and want. Uh, this does not have to apply only to store merchandise, which is tailored to fit local needs and often includes locally grown and locally produced items, but also uh, the community engagement programs. Uh, they work hard to make a difference in the areas that matter most to customers and team members in each community. A typical store has a fresh grocery area, often featuring locally grown produce, a full service deli, a fresh meat counter offering custom cuts of the highest quality meat, just as you'd get from the local butcher shop, a wine, beer, and spirits selection, a drive-up pharmacy, and a health and beauty area. A Meyer store also offers general merchandise such as clothing, electronics, toys, and sporting goods, as well as seasonal items such as a garden center in the spring and holiday decor around Christmas time. It's also important to note that the merchandise varies by store. They listen to their customers and do their best to meet the unique needs of each community carrying the particular items 
they need and want, including in many cases, locally produced items. In every community where they locate a store, they become an important community partner, supporting many organizations that are near and dear to the hearts of the people who live there. When you get a Meyer store, you also get a great neighbor. The company supports a wide variety of nonprofit organizations by donating more than 6% of its net profit to charity each year and sponsoring hundreds of community events. So they, uh, they celebrated their 50th anniversary in two, two, the, 2012. They celebrated their 50th anniversary. And then um, they also moved into uh, dairy production through the Purple Cow Creamery. So Kevin and I have reviewed a lot of uh, Purple Cow ice creams, and that is a Meyer brand. And I didn't even realize that was not around before 2012. So they, uh, they're they open. Uh, almost all the stores are open 24-7, uh, with the exception of Christmas Day. So they, they are closed on Christmas Day. But, uh, you know, they mentioned in the very beginning the Meyer family. I do not know anybody personally uh, that has the name, the last name of, of Meyer. And I guess that's because... Uh, they're based in Michigan, so maybe if if you are in the Michigan area, maybe uh, you have met people. You'll have to let me know in the comments. Have you ever met anyone uh, with the last name of Meyer? Because that's just it's not it's not one of those names that you hear um, in our area, at least. So you could see this Meyer. This we have two Meyer in, Meyer stores in Lexington. Uh, there's kind of like one on each end of town. So this is the one, the one that, that we're filming in on this day is the one it is, it's huge. It, it's, it seems to be much bigger than the one we normally shop at. And the one we normally shop at, the reason we shop there is because it's closer to Winchester. So if you're going from from Winchester to the nearest Meyer store, it will only take you 20 minutes versus if I wanted to go to this store where I'm filming, it's going to take me probably a good 45 minutes to get there just because of traffic and it's on the other side of Lexington. But the reason we like this store, uh, like I said, it seems to be so much larger and it's bright. It's very bright. It's very clean and they seem to always have a good supply of everything. When we were there on this day, we saw things in the frozen department that I've been waiting for our store to get and our store hadn't got yet. And we actually went to our closest Meyer after this and they did not have the same items. So that's what's funny to us is that you can have two Meyer stores in the same town and one store has the stuff out on the shelf and the other store does not have the stuff, uh, the stuff out on the shelf. And you think, okay, they, I know they're not just keeping it back there in the back of the store because they wouldn't have room to do, you know, to keep all this frozen stuff in the back. So, and they've told me before when I've asked about stuff, they're like, if we have it, it's out on the shelf. So, I don't understand why this Meyer gets some stuff that, that the one that we shop at doesn't get, but that's that's just the case. That's the way it is. Uh, I have also told you previously that this store is, it's neater. So I don't know if that has to do with the customers that are shopping there or the people who work in this location. Uh, I think it has to do with both. I can't. I think it can be customers that are, you know, they'll get like a pizza out. And if I don't want that pizza, I'm just going to throw it back in and I'm not going to care where I put it back. So, yes, if things are messy, that could be up to the customer. But I also think um, the store has some really good employees as well that go through and they make sure like if it's messy they make sure that they are uh, fronting those freezers and that it looks really nice. And so on this day, it surprised me, the day I'm filming, 
they were out of quite a few things, as you can see. I mean, they still had a lot, but they were out of quite a bit. Oh, and there's a mess on the floor. Well, don't step in that mess for sure. And you also always have to look on the end caps because you never know what you're going to find. So like in that one end cap, you saw anything from like broccoli or to ice cream. And then we've never actually bought anything in these deep freezers. When you hear me talking about like a like a deep freezer or something you have to reach down into, that's what I'm talking about. Now, when they come out with the turkeys around uh, Thanksgiving time, we do buy our turkey in one of those big freezers. I'm trying to open the door so that you can get a better view. It looks like those that Purdue chicken sells really well because they were low on that. And I remember for a while, um, all of the stores, uh, we never were like out completely, but a lot of the stores got uh, low on on stock a couple of years ago. We never had the trouble with um, really with meat in our area, though. And, um, you know, any time that the grocery stores uh, do did get low and they didn't have exactly what you wanted, we have other places that we can go and get meat. Uh, so you don't just have to go to the grocery store to get meat. There's other places that um, that sell meat as well, and we talked about it back when all that was going on. But some of the uh, sometimes you'll see us stop longer at certain doors than we do others, and that's just because Kevin has another channel. I've told you all about it. Uh, it's called the Lunch Lunchtime Review, and Kevin reviews uh, frozen foods over there or shelf stable foods, stuff like that. He, he does that four days a week. And so we're always looking for new things for him to review on that channel. And those are like, like if he's getting it out of the frozen section, it needs to say that it's a microwave meal. If it doesn't say, if it doesn't have microwave on there, he's not buying it. So that's one of the qualifications. It has to say it's a microwave m meal. And if the company, a lot of times people are like, well, that's better in the oven and that's not good microwaved. Well, if it's not good microwave, then the company shouldn't put it on there, right? So anyway, when you see us stop longer at some of the doors than others, it's because we're probably stopping to look it up on YouTube just to see if he's reviewed it before, or maybe I might find something for my channel that ha does have to be uh, baked in the oven. And I might want to stop and see if I've reviewed the item or not. Because for the most part, I remember uh, everything we've tried. But I tell you what really throws both of us for a loop is when these companies, it, it's especially true with uh, frozen meals like the banquet. And oh gosh, there's all kinds of just regular frozen meals. Uh, Marie Callender's and Michelina's and... Uh, those kind of meals, they change the boxes. Lean cuisine, healthy choice. So you'll be used to seeing like an orange box, and then all of a sudden they'll change to a black box or a white box or something like that. Well, it's the same meal, but then it looks completely different to your eyes. So that's when we really have to stop and look stuff up because it's like, okay, have we reviewed... Uh, this or not, it's just uh, sometimes we have to look it up to be able to tell. And some things that he's not interested in are like fake meat. Like he's been asked over year, the years, will you review like Morning Star stuff and stuff? And he has reviewed fake meat before, but he would just prefer not to. I mean, we're we are meat eaters. We like meat, and so uh, we 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 want to review things that are real meat um, and stuff that's really really hot he uh, he does not care for really really hot food and uh, I totally understand that I think it's funny that some things I've seen pictures of some things in the frozen section that like we were like everybody in America was supposed to get these frozen things and we never got them in our area for example zaps so everybody knows zaps makes potato chips they're from Louisiana well 
They also came out with these, uh, they're like uh, appetizers. So they came out with these, like, they were called like boudin balls and uh, fried pickles. They had jalapeno peppers. Uh, they look like they would be so delicious, these uh, Zaps appetizers. We never got them in our area. So I have no idea why we didn't get them, but we never got them. Um, also, I think it's cool. Um, well, it's just interesting things that come and go. So like um, on before Kevin, I'm thinking before he was doing Lunchtime Review, he was reviewing some things here and there on my channel by himself. So like there's all kinds of yogurt reviews 10 years ago where he's reviewing yogurt all by himself or he's reviewing ice cream sometimes all by himself. And I can tell you a lot of those older videos where he's reviewing ice cream by himself, it's because I had already had a shower that night and we both were like, we want to try this ice cream, but then I didn't want to get dressed. So he would just review the ice cream by himself. Um, but on uh, he could have, there were these things called uh, Lean Cuisine made these things called salad additions. And they were frozen. And that is something that definitely could have been on Lunchtime Review. But it's they're actually on my channel. If you type in Tammy Dunn, Lean Cuisine Salad Editions, there is no telling what Kevin even looked like 10 years ago. He probably still had dark hair. <laughs> I haven't looked at the videos, but he probably still had dark hair. But they had Southwest Chicken. They had a Harvest uh, fruit and chicken. They had a bistro chicken, buffalo style chicken, cranberry and chicken, Greek style chicken. A lot of them were with chicken. Uh, they had a turkey ranch, but then they had a wrap edition, which was uh, chicken teriyaki. But he reviewed all of those on my on this channel when actually those would have been cool to do on Lunchtime Review. But like I said, I don't think we had started Lunchtime Review at that time. Lunchtime review was honestly it was my idea because uh, Kevin was in his office every day and he was Kevin is one of these that he gets tired of eating the same stuff every single day. Like I can eat the same thing 365 days a year and never and not get tired of it at all. I just like that uh, that normality to me. That's just normal to just. To have that, you know, to be eating the same things every day where Kevin likes having different stuff all the time. So he was he was trying all these different foods and taking them to work. And it's like, uh, you need to be reviewing these things. I don't know why I was looking at my feet there for a second. But um, I was like, you need to be reviewing these things on your channel. And um, I think I'm pretty sure last time I looked, he had like over 30,000 subscribers on that channel. I'm surprised that his channel hasn't grown more than it has because he does a really good job on those reviews. He gets a lot of compliments on them that he is very um, to the point. He doesn't drag out time. Uh, you get a lot of these people that review food and they're talking about all kinds of stuff they don't need to talk about. They're trying to get to that 10 minute point because they know if they get to a 10 minute mark that they'll probably get more views on YouTube and their videos, more people will see them on YouTube. And Kevin's not that kind of person. You know, he reviews it. He talks about it, uh, the food. He says what he needs to say. And if the video is only six minutes, well, then it's only six minutes. Um, so he does a good time. Uh, Sorry, he does a good job with not wasting people's time. This is all that uh, purple cow ice cream that we were talking about a while ago that Meyer came out with. And like I said, I thought it had been around for forever uh, since the beginning of Meyer, And of course it hasn't. Uh, I tell you something else that uh, they used to have in the, um, the ice cream kind of section. We're looking at that Kemp's yogurt. Um, they had a healthy choice uh, Greek frozen yogurt and it was absolutely delicious it came in these little cups and it was very low calorie and they had uh like blueberry and vanilla bean and raspberry i'm sure they had strawberry as well 
But that was some good stuff. And and you wonder, like, what happened to that? Because I, I think I'm wondering if a lot of people thought, like, it would taste like yogurt, like it would have, like, a tart uh, tartness or something to it. But it didn't. You would have never even known it was yogurt. And something else that we bought, like, crazy were those... Um, they, I think they were called Weight Watchers Smart Ones, and I've talked about them before on the channel. I actually, if you type in, I think you can type in Tammy Dunn Weight Watchers Smart Ones. I think that's what they were called. And and I did like a grocery haul, and I reviewed some of those desserts in a video. And of course, it wasn't like it is today. The video's not not the same as it is today, but you get to see those desserts in uh, those videos and it's just it amazes me that they're gone now like like if you're looking for a, a weight watchers dessert i don't know what you're going to find right now but those things are gone they would they they came in these little black cups and you would get like two cups per box and i don't remember how many calories they were but i remember one of them had like a like it was like a white, like a vanilla ice cream with like chocolate sauce. And then like another one would have like peanut butter cups. It was like, uh, had these little bitty peanut butter cups, but you could really taste the peanut butter. And let me tell you, when you're trying to watch what you're eating, those things are like pure bliss. They're like, oh my gosh, I've waited all day long to have something like this. And they're absolutely wonderful. So I'm really surprised that they went away because I think they could bring them back. Truly. I think there is a market for that stuff. Maybe they just needed to go away a little while for people to appreciate them and start buying them again. Because sometimes that's what happens. Um, you know, sometimes you take things for granted. Uh, like right now, I haven't bought toaster strudels in forever because they got rid of some of my very favorite flavors, like the pumpkin. The pumpkin's been gone for three or four years now. Um, and so I haven't bought toaster strudels in a long time. Maybe they need to take them off the market a while. And if they bring them back, um, I might appreciate them next time. Who knows? Kevin was shocked they had ice cream for dogs up there. And look, he's pointing at the Ben and Jerry's. Or, yeah, they had these Ben and Jerry's up there uh, for dogs. So you got to be careful what you get because you don't want to buy uh, pet food and you eat it. And it's really for uh, uh, Fido there. So if you follow me for a long time, you'll recall uh, that there is a cat that um, it was the next street over. And this cat would always come up to me and it would just roll around on the sidewalk like crazy. It was a Maine Coon cat. And we haven't seen that cat in a year. I think it died. So this is the new cat. This is my replacement kitty. And this is a absolutely gorgeous cat. Um, I've seen it twice now. This, uh, well, no, this is like the third time. So the first time I saw it, I didn't call it over to me. The second time, this is the second time I've seen it. And it just rolled and rolled and rolled and let me pet all over it. And then Kevin and I have taken a walk since then. And um, it let me pet it again. Um, and then the most recent walk we took, I didn't see it. So, but now I'm looking forward. This is a completely different house. Um, where this cat is at, but but I'm I'm sorry to say that my my Maine Coon uh, cat must have died. Uh, but this is a gorgeous cat. And now uh, Kevin sprayed the outside of the house. Um, he sprayed the house with like uh, this uh, stuff to clean the siding. And so he when he cleaned the siding, he sprayed the window as well because the window sill had. Uh, stuff on it and he was cleaning it and so it left this window filthy so kevin is pulling down this window i said we have to clean the window it looks like somebody threw up on it <laughs> and so we're cleaning the window but i figured while he's cleaning the window i want to tell you well first of all i want to comment the refrigerator that's next to kevin that is the only refrigerator we have, okay? That is the only refrigerator. It's a freezer on the left-hand side in that left-hand door, and it's a refrigerator on the right-hand side. So if you uh, watch the Jungle Gems International Hall from last week, I had people commenting. There's a, another, a better view of the whole refrigerator. And you can see how the, the freezer part is skinnier than the refrigerator part. 
But I had people that have watched me for years and they're like, do you have more than one freezer or something like that? And I'm like, no, I don't. That's it. That's all we have. People don't understand how I can get all that frozen stuff that you saw in the video in that freezer. Well, it it's because it's planned. It's very, very carefully planned. Kevin and I, um, I, I make sure that I get things down to where there's almost nothing at all in that freezer before we go to Jungle Gems. Because Jungle Gems, is, it's like an hour and a half there. It's an hour and a half home. It's a whole day thing. So we get up early in the morning. We get there. Uh, these past two times we've been there, we've stopped at a bakery beforehand and done reviews of so different bakeries. And uh, so uh, we uh, then we get to Jungle Gems. We uh, shop for probably four hours, and then we have to get back to the car. And believe you me, it is fun, <laughs> fun, haha. Uh, not really getting the stuff back in the car because we have to make sure all the frozens in a cooler or frozen bags. We have to make sure that the other stuff is put up in the trunk. So, uh, but then once we get home. Um, I am playing Tetris in this freezer, and it worked out fine. And believe it or not, I probably could have fit probably five more pizzas in there if I had wanted to. Uh, so we just, uh, we had plenty of room, and we just make sure that it gets down to nothing before we go. You know, we don't, I'm not going to make a big shopping trip like that if if the, the cabinets are loaded. The, the cabinets were almost completely bare before we went. And I also want to m- mention here, Someone named Paul, I won't say your last name, someone named Paul sent me a letter from Utah, and he was asking me about the Betty Crocker cherry chip cake. I actually made the Betty Crocker cherry chip cake. It's been about six years ago on the channel, and you can't find it anymore. And uh, so Paul was asking me, do I know where he, do I know where he can find it besides Amazon? Because Amazon is really, really expensive. It's ridiculous when it comes to most food. Um, but um, I, I, I do not know where you can find that. It's one of those things where you just have to do a, a product search and you have to look for it. Um, I know that I searched on the Kroger website, the Walmart website in our area, and I'm not even seeing it in uh, in our area. So I don't know where they're selling that now. Uh, but it's a delicious cake. So, Paul, I'm sorry I can't give you more information, uh, but hopefully you'll be able to... Um, to find it near you soon and it just you mentioning that cherry uh, chip cake makes me want the cherry chip cake too so i'm gonna finish up this window uh but i hope you all enjoyed the video we always appreciate your support i'm posting every day something on patreon i'm posting something every day for my youtube members so if you follow me there you'll get to see a little bit something that the regular people who've watched the videos don't get to see uh but like i said i hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next week